The story dwells on hypnagogia, an intriguing state of transition from wakefulness to sleep, a gateway into the world of dreams. While its primary definition anchors itself on the onset of sleep, hypnagogia has also been linked to the awakening process. Often termed as hypnopamia, this fascinating limbo breathes life into hallucinations, lucid dreaming, and sleep paralysis, blurring the line between reality and dream. The term hypnagogia underpins both sleep and wakefulness, which can be complex to distinguish given that similar experiences may manifest in both spaces. A spectrum of terms reflecting different interpretations, from visions of half-sleeps and borderland asleep to asleep-onset dreams, allude to hypnagogia's nebulous nature. Appropriately termed as threshold, consciousnesses, or half-asleep state, hypnagogic consciousness is at the cusp of sleep and wakefulness, yet not fully anchored in either. Often a fleetingly ephemeral period, it can be drawn out due to sleep disturbances or intentionally through techniques such as meditation. The transition from wakefulness to sleep and vice versa is often punctuated by varying sensory experiences, from the imperceptible to vivid hallucinations. A common manifestation of the hypnagogic state is the phosphine phenomenon, nebulous visual impressions that can manifest as random patterns, figures, or three-dimensional visuals offering an immersive experience. While mostly static and devoid of narrative, it is believed by some that hypnagogic visuals serve as a bridge to fragmentary dreams. Particularly explicit accounts of this captivating mental state are explored in the comprehensive works of Marie, Jean Leon, Marquis de Ray de Saint Denis. The experiences preceding sleep, known as hypnagogic hallucinations, can often mirror our daily activities. For example, prolific trampoline users may still sense the up and down motion. Chess players may visualize the board and pieces while new employees in high-stress jobs could mentally reenact their work tasks before falling asleep. Auditory hallucinations are common in this state, varying in intensity from mere whispers to booming explosions, a phenomenon known as the exploding head syndrome. Hypnagogic hallucinations may also feature one's inner voice or voices of others, whether familiar or strange, often uttering nonsensical, fragmented words, neologisms, or even poetry and music. Not limited to auditory and visual, the realm of hypnagogia encompasses sensory experiences including taste, smell, and touch, related phenomena alongside changes in perceived body proportions, feelings of floating or falling. While transitioning from wakefulness to sleep, mental processes can also shift drastically. Ideas that seemed consistent in the hypnagogic state may appear ludicrous when awakened. This unique state of consciousness is characterized by a receptive, suggestible mentality, which is easily influenced by external factors, a condition verified by Eid readings that reveal increased sensitivity to sounds at sleep onset thus. Hypnagogia offers a fascinating glimpse into the complex world of our subconscious mind. In a notable study by Harvard's Deirdre Barrett from 2001, it was found that the unique state between wakefulness and sleep, known as hypnagogia, has a particular propensity for problem solving. The vivid hallucinatory imagery that defines hypnagogia allows problems to be examined with a unique perspective, encouraging innovative solutions a common feature of the sleep phase, akin to other stages of sleep phase. Akin to other stages of sleep is selective amnesia. While this typically affects the hippocampal memory system related to autobiographical or episodic memories, semantic memory linked to the neocortical memory system is not commonly affected while some suggest that hypnagoga and REM sleep contribute to strengthening semantic memory. Such claims have been disputed. Faced with this lack of definitive conclusions, the individual experiencing hypnagogia may interpret these phenomena according to their belief and cultural context sometimes perceiving them as visions, prophecies, or artistic inspirations. Many physiological studies revolve around the spontaneous experiences at the onset of sleep, which correlate to the initial phase of non-REM sleep and occasionally pre-sleep alpha waves. It's been suggested by researchers like Hori et al. that the hypnagogic state has unique attributes that set it apart from both active wakefulness and deeper sleep stages. Analyzing EJ readings, Hori and his team have suggested different stages of EJ activity, with hypnagogic imagery occurring prominently during specific phases defined by particular wave patterns. 
Additionally, the covert rapid eye movement theory proposes hidden elements of REM sleep surface during this transition stage from wakefulness to sleep. This hypothesis finds support from studies indicating more similarity between transition stage each and REM sleep each than with stage two sleep eye. Apart from brainwave changes, physical changes such as altered respiratory patterns and decreased frontalis muscle activity have been observed during this state. Episodes of immediate onset of sleep, called microsleep, may occur due to a range of factors, including sleep deprivation, which can lead to impaired cognition and even amnesia meditation. Noted author James A. Austin in his book Zen and the Brain might help develop a unique ability to freeze the hypnagogic process at different stages while diving into sleep. Before conducting a comprehensive examination, I would have confidently stated that my perception in darkness was simply a consistent black mass occasionally interrupted by faint glimmers of light, purple, and minor fluctuation. Yet after training myself to scrutinize it with as much effort as someone straining to decipher a sign, post in the dark, I have come to understand that this isn't true instead. There's a constant flow of changing designs and shapes, although they're too elusive and intricate for me to accurately portray. Maria Mikhailovna Manasina suggested that to observe these phenomena required a keen observational skill, making it more noticeable in individuals with high intelligence. She also noted that children are more inclined to be curious about these visions, as they often press their heads into their pillows in anticipation of the resulting images. Havelock Ellis reminisces about a shared childhood interest in such visions when he was around seven years old, recalling how he and his cousin would watch a sequence of images that both of them could see by burying their heads in the pillows. It wasn't until the invention of electroencephalography, EE, that physiological data was added to these observational methods. The quest to find neurological correlations for hypnagogic imagery started with Davis and colleagues in the 1930s and continues to evolve today. Despite a decrease in research due to the dominance of the behaviorist paradigm, particularly in the English-speaking world, the late 20th century saw a resurgence. The investigations into hypnagogia and related levels of changed consciousness continue to contribute significantly to the multidisciplinary study of consciousness. However, they remain somewhat overlooked compared to the phenomena of sleep and dreams, despite some describing hypnagogia as a well-trodden and yet unmapped territory. The term hypnagogias was introduced to mainstream psychology literature by Dr. Andreas Mavramatis in his 1983 thesis. Originally created by Alfred Mary, the term was used to define the state of awareness at the onset of sleep. The term hypnopompic was later created by Frederick Myers to describe the awakening period. Mavramatis utilizes hypnagogias to denote the study of sleep, transition states of consciousness, and uses hypnagogics leading into sleep or hypnopompy urging from sleep to identify specific experiences being analyzed. Pivotal reviews of the scientific literature on this topic have been completed by Leaning, Schachter, Richardson, and Mavramatis. So, what are the different methods to induce dreamlike sequences? States namely on the verge of sleep? One of the methods include the biofeedback devices which are purposed to stimulate and sustain a state of state, a state of heightened relaxation and noticeable theta eg activity that naturally resonates the most with our dreaming. Another focus of the narrative involves the use of Gansfeld. Environments, a form of sensory deprivation perceived to mimic the state of sleep onset. However, this belief often questioned as the edge spectrums gathered from a relaxed state of wakefulness more closely resembles that of a Gansfeld experience than it does with the sleep onset as noted by Wackerman et al. Lull a broader category, namely hypnagogic experience, might be a more fitting term, which would include not only true hypnagogic images, but also the perceived ones engendered in other states overall. The theme of the narrative emphasizes the different mechanisms to simulate the dream state and the dream state and the fascinating world of sleep science.